So we had the Linaro Connect, and uh, who are you? I'm Jelaine Lovejoy, and I am an open source attorney. Worked in um, various uh, companies and also on quite a few community projects, including the Software Package Data Exchange, also known as SPDX, and um, Open Ch the Open Chain Project. Two things I have been involved with uh, a long time and, and, and recently as well. So, um, what, what does it mean to be a lawyer with the open source uh, community? Uh, well, I think most uh, lawyers in this space have a lot of background in intellectual property law, in particular copyright, as well as sort of broader knowledge about software and and anything sort of licensing aspects of software as sort of you know the foundational knowledge. You know, and then in everything in open source licensing, it sort of builds builds upon that. It's usually a lot of working with developers and engineers, which I always enjoy. And understanding the community, I think, is an also also a really really important thing because um, you know you you can't just look at the legal risks in a pure way. You might in some other legal areas. You really need to know the bigger context and how the community works and sort of that that background. So. Um uh, Linaro is doing lots of open, everything is open source, so there's laws with that and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'm, open source is open source, um, open source license in, licenses enable the collaboration that we see in the open source space. So you, you have a copyright license that gives back all those rights that enables you to share and modify and redistribute um, the code. So uh, understanding that and how that interplays with um, other open source licenses or even proprietary licenses and uh, you know making sure that all works together as well as um, there may be, there's also can be aspects of setting up open source projects in terms of governance and, and that structure and it's kind of like setting up a small business but with a lot of different rules so there's a lot of different things. Uh, so does that mean uh, all these uh, guys and uh, w women around here have to think about it all the time or <laughs> because uh, it's, it's interesting, Lenaro, I've been doing videos for a few years and uh, there's all these companies that contribute, mm -hmm. assign, mm -hmm. assignees, mm -hmm. and they right. contribute money and they hire people to work on free open source software. Right. And it just kind of works out. Um, yes, it's, it's a, you know, there's, there's a few more layers than that in order to make it work out, which uh, can range from the agreements that those companies have with uh, with Lenaro in terms of the assignees, uh, the engineers that work on the on, on the code, and then as also just the way Lenaro is structured, and then the licenses for the projects. But no, I don't think that the engineers are thinking about the open source licenses all the time, or at least I would hope not, because that wouldn't be a good use of their time. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so what what would be the collaboration? What, how do how would how do you fit in and, and, and work with with them or with companies? As a lawyer. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think there it can range from the sort of what you would traditionally think a lawyer does in terms of, uh, you know, assessing risk and, and keeping the company within sort of the bounds of the law, and, you know, whatever what other, whatever part of the law that is, um, uh, it, helping identify sort of, uh, you know, the more the specific aspects of engaging with the open source community where that interplays with the law. And then it can be not just sort of strictly strictly legal, if you will, in terms of understanding that, how that, those sort of more legal questions or the licensing questions that intersect with the actual how stuff gets done and the, in the, in the community, how the, uh, the community operates. Um, so are there lots of things happening in terms of the law around open source? Um, the law itself, I think, usually changes quite slowly, but there's always new things happening. And so, you know, it depends on what you mean by what's happening in the law. There's, um, you, you know, there's always kind of litigation and lawsuit activities. One thing you might think of change, that can change things. You also may just see people coming out with new licenses or new ways to license things and whether or not, or, you know, and even sometimes we see new open source licenses. So there's, you know, changes in that and maybe changes in how... How projects are structured, you know, that can cut across some <clears throat> touch upon sort of legal aspects and 
So there's like new precedents happening, right? Some new so kind of like sometimes. cases that get resolved and it kind of the, the precedents <clears throat> become law kind of, right? So Sometimes, yeah. I mean, that's a rather slow, like I said, that's a rather slow uh, process. But. And there's so many different countries. So the EU is mm -hmm. different from uh, the Brexit UK and it's different from the uh, US. Yeah, but we've, we've sort of globally agreed upon some common, you know, foundational uh, rules if you will and especially when it comes to copyright so so there's there are variations from each jurisdiction but there's also some commonalities that we can rely on as well even china even even china to some extent yeah yeah so uh in your keynote that with some other things you, you were talking about that you can mention like uh it was mostly explaining all what you just said um, so now my keynote um, was more about um, how lawyers and developers can sort of get along better um, and, and work together. So I just sort of had a collection of, of advice um, or you know, lessons learned, if you will, from being in this space for a while on how we can uh, sort of be more efficient in how we work together. Because lawyers and, and engineers do have, to, do have to work together more, I think open source kind of forces that more direct um, uh, interaction and, and sometimes that's sort of challenging for people and so just trying to kind of share some of my insights of, of sort of on both sides of the coin as well as just how organizations also engage with open source and sort of some of the bigger like, responsibilities we have on maintaining those, those so, sort of social norms that create open source collaboration. I can imagine a lot of these uh, uh, people that work in open source have some kind of uh, fundamental uh, philosophy, life philosophy, that is a little bit anti-copyright and all that stuff. That's why they work in free software a little bit. Uh, you know, like uh, they, they, they are kind of, uh, you know, anti-establishment a little bit. Right, or? yeah, maybe. Uh, you could say that for some people, I think. Uh, that, but that's the, I, sort of, been, I, I think the irony is that, as I said before, open source licenses are built on copyright law. So, you, you know, and that's what helps enable that, uh, you know, that, that structure um, around creating collaboration. So, so for someone to be sort of anti-intellectual property law, um, it, it sort of doesn't almost fit with the reality of what's happening now. I mean, I think there's other, you know, other aspects a lot of people may have, um, sort of, you know, issues with. But but the, but the sort of you know the standard open source license is, is definitely taking taking the the you know the, the um, legal construct and then using it in order to, to create that sharing. That might that might be why there is some there is some friction sometimes, right, between those those open source developers and the, the lawyers, maybe because they think ah. I don't need this or something like that. Um, well, I don't. I don't. I, there, I, you know, I can have lots of theories of why there's frictions. I think generally people just kind of don't like lawyers, and then when the lawyers are involved, they think it's a bad thing or it's a scary thing. And that was kind of some of the point of my of my talk is not uh, not looking at it that way. Basically, you know, be looking at it from the perspective of how do we sort of help each other and how do we. Uh, you know, work work better together instead of seeing it as unnecessary friction, which I don't think there needs to be. Are, are there is there a lot of licensing going on from the open source communities trying to adopt technologies that are proprietary to some companies and trying to convince them that they should bring those things over to the open source? Maybe there's some money involved or transactions and co contracts. And maybe suddenly they go and say, hey, can we please have this over here in the open source? And then there's some discussions going on. Uh, I don't, I mean, that, those kind of conversations, if someone is going to take something proprietary and make it open source is probably a decision up to that company. So you're, you know, you're not going to usually see that. Um, some companies do that. Some companies make that decision on their own. They say, oh, you know what, this isn't. You know, this this technology it'd be more useful if if it's more freely available. Like that value exceeds the value of what, whatever money they may be making off of it. So uh, you see that sometimes happening, but it's usually you know it's a, that's a usually an internal business decision, and then you just see it once it happens. And uh, here, the Lenaran Connect, are you gonna have some meetings with the, some of the open source developers, or what are you planning to do? Um, I am only here until tomorrow, so I've been yes, chatting with people and uh, enjoying my time here, and then enjoying Vancouver, and and then I head home. Where is that? Uh, Boulder, Colorado. All right, thank you.